previously on Realms and Nerds. Son, you were most Four of you hear a loud noise. It sounds almost like an explosion, something going off in the distance. I think we should check her out. Yeah, better uh, make sure there's not another dragon coming into town or some such business. We're getting paid for this, right? Not sure why I'm suddenly compelled by adventure, but I feel I should join. Sarge grabs two beers and throws them up in the air towards you guys. Leon jumps from his feet, grabs the beer, cracks it open, and as he lands, takes a sip. Just know you've stolen my drink. You will die. Challenge accepted. On top of this pile of stones, there's a big hole, and uh, there's smoke billowing from this hole. As you move down this tunnel, you start to hear a noise behind you. A small lantern is lit, and in front of you are two deep gnomes. Follow us. left off, our four compatriots had just been kidnapped by what they have just now learned to be a band of deep gnomes. As our four compatriots are being led down this passage, Thomas is in the front of the group, uh, and there are two deep gnomes standing in front of him who are kind of clamoring on, having some light chatter. And he decides that he's going to try and figure out why exactly they are being captured and being held. Now listen, we just dropped into this hole. Why do you want to kidnap us? Um, well, uh, you know, we were just, you guys look, uh, how about we just take you to our boss and and, uh, she'll tell you what's going on. Who's your boss? What's her name? Oh, um, uh, hey, hey, we can't tell him, right? She said... Yeah, we can't tell you. Why not? Um, you'll just have to find out. Uh... Seems like a pretty shitty reason to me. I ask in Gnomish, please, could you take me to your leader? I mean no harm and merely wish to pass through safely. He responds in Gnomish, Um, thank you for speaking our native tongue, but, uh, we we are taking you to her, so, uh, you're just gonna have to, you know, stay, stay along for the ride. Absolutely. Okay. Good talk. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy's going to continue walking on leading the group. Hey, listen, man. I'm like a big hero, okay? I, I'm I'm an honorable dude. You don't need to keep us chained up like this. Oh, we know all about you, Jeff. Our our leader has been has been watching you for, for quite a while now. You've That's done, not creepy. You've done good for the town. All right, well, uh... Cool, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And they're going to keep walking, leading you down this small stone passage. Uh, it, it's gradually going down and um, and starts to kind of weave a little bit, but it's still um, not not a ton of headspace and a little bit claustrophobic. I mean, gnomes aren't exactly the, the height of an average-sized human or, or elf. elf. <laughs> um Thank God I'm a half one. After you've been going down for a little while, this small passage suddenly opens up into a large cavern that is well lit. Um, you notice right off to the left, there's a waterfall coming out of the wall of this cavern and um, right into this big pool. And there are some shacks on the side of this pool. And it seems to be a nice, small, hustling, bustling community of these gnomes. Like, kind of like an underground city? 
Uh, yeah. I mean, think more of like an underground little town. Not quite as big as a city. More like a little like mud hut. Like think like like a settlement. So like, so like <laughs> yeah, not the yeah. not the city of the dwarves in the inheritance cycle. Like a lot smaller than that. It's it's not a masterpiece of. Okay. Are we talking about Smurf Town in the mountain? <laughs> Smurf Town Underground. Smurf Village. Yeah. Smurf Village Underground. Uh, as we, these gnomes uh, continue to lead the four of you down this pass into the town. Uh, and now that you're out in the light, you can see that there are the two gnomes in front of you and there are four gnomes behind you. None of them have really seemed to be, you know, overly precautious. Um, some of them have, have some pickaxes. And others are carrying, uh, you know, maybe a small sword on their hip, but it's not like they're well equipped or anything. No, it's not like they're right. actively, you know, engaged in in holding you. Uh, it does appear that they are being as non, you know, threatful as possible to you guys. And as you're walking and they're leading you down, they lead you closer to the edge of this cavern, um, going to the back of the town. And you notice that the walls seem a bit unique in this cavern. And they keep leading you on, uh, and you find your way to a small hole on the side of this cavern. The village is probably 50 yards or so behind you at this point, and it's a small opening. I'd like to do an investigation to see if I can figure anything more out about this settlement, like maybe uh, about like how long it's been here or things of that nature. Sure. Roll uh, investigation. And I get, I have stone cunning, so I get advantage on that. Mm, that's a 10. The settlement appears to be older. These deep gnomes have been living in caverns and moving around for quite some time. Uh, in fact, it's not uncommon for them to sometimes abandon a settlement and move on, and then later another group or the same group will come back and, you know, build up this or live there for a little while and then move on again. Um, so it's not, there's no way to definitely say how old this village is. Okay. Anybody else want to do any investigations, anything? I'm just... Just to make sure I'm clear from last week, we are still inside that dragon, right? Sure, roll a uh, perception check. Eleven. When you first came into this cavern, uh, you did notice that it appeared to be... Uh, this cavern was made out of the inside of a dragon lung, or dragon rib cage. Now, where you currently are... The walls appear to be uh, of, of a molten lava, you know, like an obsidian kind of. Um, okay, so, um, but you don't necessarily see like dragon bones coming out like before. Yeah, so it's the whatever kind of rock is made from lava cooling obsidian. obsidian. I would like to do a perception check to see kind of like the dimensions of the cavern and just kind of like get my bearings of how close. Try to see if. Is there, like, a skylight in here, or is it... A skylight. <laughs> an open cavern, or is there... Is it just lit? Yep. It's lit. Is it lit? <laughs> it's lit. Roll for it. Critical fail. Woo! You don't have eyes. Well, <laughs> I mean, there might Looking be a skylight. You and you fall on your Who face. knows here? <laughs> Everything. Oh, I can see the back of my eyelids. Ha-ha! <laughs> Everything's too... Everything went dark, boys. Existence. As Alavaster looks up to the top of the cavern to see how it's being lit, it, it appears like there's a light that just gets closer to him and brighter, and a small glow bug comes and just smacks himself right into Alavaster's eye and squirts all his, his luminescent juices in his eye. <laughs> his eye's glowing. And now Alavaster has a glowing yellow eye. Does he Can I still see out of partially it? Partially yes. blind? Uh, you have a, uh, a disadvantage on perception checks for the next, like, minute and a half. Oh, it takes longer than that to get bug juice out of my eye, but I'm gonna leave that alone. <laughs> Speaking from experience. Okay. <laughs> Bringing reality to D&D. &D. This band of gnomes, 
uh, moves into this small passageway. It's it's larger than the passageway you were in. By small, I mean it's about um, ten feet wide and about seven feet tall. So, and it's a nice, kind of more refined tunnel. And this tunnel's actually going up slightly. They lead you down this passage, and you find yourself in the remnants of a dragon skull. It has been from the inside chipped away at, and you're, when you walk into this room, you're actually walking on dragon bone. And sitting at a table, a, a large table, at the back of this room near the mouth of the dragon, you know, kind of like back of the throat, you know, top of the throat. Am I making any sense? Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm talking it's, about? It's further back in the throat, so it's higher up. I know all about the back of the throat. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Uh, there's a large table at the back of the head uh, near the mouth, and um, sitting at this table is a female about five and a half feet tall with black hair. A female Deep what? gnome, right? Still? Human. Female, oh, human. human. All right, lady, we got some questions for you, and we want some answers. Does she appear old or young? Young. About okay. 35. Okay. Somewhere in the mid She looks. She looks like she's in her, like, middle age. Then. Yep. The early middle age. Still, you know, very healthy, very... Full of life. Yes. I'm now presenting to you the great and mighty Sana. But uh, how could you be Sana? She is supposed to be thousands of years old, is she not? Um, uh, boss, uh, we're gonna leave now, okay? And uh, these gnomes are actually gonna pull out the seats around the table for you guys, and then they're going to run off out of this room. Okay, you're not the sauna, are you? Please, have a seat. Well, hello, ma'am. Like, how do you do? Very good. Please, sit down. You know, I, I really Just don't sit. feel like sitting right now. Um, sir, uh, um, oh, please, uh, what is your name? Uh, Name's Leon. Leon, yes. Please, I have a proposition for you. Hey, come on, guys. If she wanted to kill us, she, like, probably could have already done it. I don't know. Loving those, your optimism. Those gnomes seem kind of uh, not up to the spirit of fighting. But uh, I'll take a seat. All right. Are we going to get paid for what we're doing? <laughs> well, I-, I was hoping that your payment would be the honor to save the land and... Oh, my God. <laughs> well, oh. you know Thomas is out. <clears throat> well, Goodbye. I was uh, going to get up and walk out of the room. Thomas never sat down. <laughs> There's no money. He's not interested. So is he walking out? He's starting to walk out, yeah. Uh, Bye, dude. <laughs> Hang loose. Well, I always do. There may be some treasure in it. All right, what are we doing? He turns right back around and walks over, but he's not sitting down. <laughs> he's standing on the other side Thomas, of the table, arms crossed. Have a seat. No. I can hear you fine from here. Just Le- go ahead. Leon walks over to the table and gets in the stupid chair. You know, he doesn't want to. My name is Sana. So you've said. Um, I never said. So they said. Anyways, you may have heard of me. I kind of saved this land at one point. But you've heard the myth, I assume. The legend about me. Look, I've been watching over this land for years now, ever since I first saved it. These deep gnomes, they're, we've been moving around and, uh, they just, they love to take care of the, you know, the top land without them even knowing about it. Anyways, we kind of have a problem. Have you ever heard of a Zorn before? I'm gonna have to go with no. The, I, I don't, the name, uh, I don't know, the name seems kind of familiar, but, uh, it just doesn't quite come to me. Uh, uh, maybe you should, uh, just fill us in, man. Well, Zorn is a monster of the deep. It comes from the Underdark. They can fade straight through rock. They just go around eating up gems, and they, they live on gems, actually. Well, as you may have known, when I flooded the land, 
I buried all the dragons here, underneath the ground, but... Well, recently I've noticed that some of them have come back as dark dragons. And I believe they're still asleep, and at this point they are not a threat, and we, we're not ready to deal with them yet. But these Zorns have moved in, and they're starting to get close to the dragon's treasure. It's not, it's, it's, if it gets too close, it's going to awake the dragon, and we're going to be in a lot more trouble then. All right, so we kill some dark beasts and get some glory. Let's do it. Yes. I was hoping that you four would be up to the task. I did hear that you were on your way over to investigate the, the breach. Well, you know, uh, saving the, uh, saving the town is kind of my job. Uh, quick, uh, point of, uh, of investigation, I guess. Um, if they can phase through the rocks, how are we supposed to find them? <laughs> well, that's where I come in. As you, you may know, I have power over the water. Well, if I can flush them out by drilling holes into the rock where they are, it flushes them out. The only problem is that after I do that, I'm not strong enough to take it on. So your plan is to draw it out and then send a couple of weebs in to do the fighting for you. Is that what I'm getting here? <laughs> well, look, you know, if I die, I'll just be born again. It doesn't matter if I die in this fight. You will what? Say what? How do you think I'm still so young? I've only died about, what is it now, 103 times? I assume you get better at it eventually, don't you? Dying stills a bitch. You never gets old. I, 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 was just kind of, <laughs> I was just kind of assuming you were like one of them elves. You know, you just keep looking young forever. <laughs> nope. The sprites thought it would be fun to turn me into a human. Hey, uh, so listen, uh, man, not to be, like, disrespectful or anything, but, uh, how do we know that you're not lying to us? I mean, like, can you, pr can you prove, uh, something to us? Um, you mean like this? She's gonna hold out her hand, and simply from pulling water out of the air is going to amass a water ball in her hand, hovering above her hand. Now that's pretty cool. And she's just going to take it and underhand toss it right at Jeff's face. <laughs> hey, man. Next time, uh, maybe you ought to throw one at old standing man over there. At this point, standing. Thomas would like to... Uh, Use a his second level spell, create and destroy water, to create a ball of water, and throw it at Jeff's face. Okay. All right. <laughs> do you have to like do do I roll anything for that, or do you just do it? Is, just, is there just, is there a roll for the water, or is it just a spell? That you just, um, it's just a spell to create. Water yeah, it's just a spell that creates space. water, and then I'm just okay. You know, and then tossing make, it at his face. Roll. Oh, well, okay. You'd add your dexterity modifier, and you make a, um, a acrobatics check. Uh, 19. Uh, that's a 5. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> so, um, Thomas is going to uh, create this ball of water, and then he's just going to full-on wind up, uh, you know pick up his front leg, lean into the pitch, and it just hits Jeff right in the side of the face, and he's <laughs> Get the slow-mo guys up with a camera. As the water just, <laughs> As the water just his hits face. his face and just splashes across. <laughs> hey, that was a good one. Thanks. Yours is uh, even better. OG. <laughs> well, so, will you do it? You know what? Oh, just yeah. for throwing water in his face, I will. Sounds good. Sounds like a lot I of fun. I still want to get paid, though. <sighs> Isn't the town going to pay you guys? I don't know. They've paid I take money where I take money, money where I can land. get it. That's what it's all about. Well, I, uh... 
I don't know if I really want to want to pay Thomas anymore at this point, man. But uh, uh, I I don't know. We could probably work something out. Hey, Thomas, you know how those Zorns eat gemstones and such whatnot? Maybe you can gut one when we kill it, and you find some gemstones in its stomach. How's that sound? Well, you down for that? Only if it, you get to it before it digests the gems. Otherwise, it just comes out as other raw organic materials. Yeah, man, that means you might, like, end up with a handful of shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, not quite, but yes. And All right. Well, outcome little rocks. Well, I've like got to save the town. That's kind of my whole deal. So uh, let's uh, let's get it done. All right. Good. Um. Well, if you guys do, you guys need anything before you go? No. Well, if everything's in order, follow me. And she's going to lead you back down this passage as you walk. Off the dragon bone onto the obsidian, this small known company comes and walks along with you and leads you back to the main village. From there, they're going to take you to the other side of the cavern and you're going to go down another small tunnel, more narrow. Uh, it's a, you know, it's a one wide passage and that's going to lead down and then finally you're going to find yourself in what appears to be just another giant chest cavity of a dragon. Full, you know, rib cage from side to side. And there's a, a wall right in front of it. It's a, just an entire gated off, just giant metal gate, gate that they have. They lead you up to this gate. And on the other side of this gate, you see this almost arena-esque room. It appears that it at one point may have been a current dig site, uh, but now it is abandoned and has an eerie vibe of an arena pit. The first deep gnome that is in front of this company walks up to the gate and pulls out a giant key ring and shuffles through and finds the right key and puts it in the hole and turns. But he doesn't open the gate, just unlocks it a little bit. Well, um, are you guys ready for this? Yeah, we are. Indeed. Sada, are you ready? Um, yeah, let's do this. Are you guys ready? Yeah, yep. Yeah, man, let's, yeah. uh, let's get it going. Yeah? All right. This deep gnome's going to open up the gate a little bit more, uh, to let you guys in. And it's a small entry passage, and I'm either side of you... You have a lot of room, and then there are uh, there's like a big kind of rectangular box that comes out of the ground on either side of you, near the edge of the rib cage. And you guys are right now are kind of in the middle. In front of you, you see another small rectangular column that's up, and that's all you can really see as of right now when you walk in. And you can see some, you can definitely see some other stuff in this room, but. That's kind of being blocked by these two things on the other side of you. All right, guys. If you guys are ready, I'm going to try and draw it out. Uh, and Sana is going to put out her arms on either side. And as you watch these uh, water start to accumulate on her fingertips, and then slowly a mass outside, and it stretches around and goes in the smallest of cracks through these walls, and you kind of see a small, small cracks just on the side of these walls going all the way around this rib cage. And suddenly, right in the middle of this room, from the ground, you just see this giant three-legged, three-armed mass of, of red meat pop out of the ground with a giant mouth in the middle of this beast with two eyes on either side, and it, it has its arms that just grab and can rip right into its mouth. Pops out of the ground, and uh, it, it directs its eye right at you guys, and just lets out this deep screech. Well, he's like kind of a big guy, huh? Uh, he, he doesn't look all that tough. Thomas is literally just gonna, like, yell right back at it. 
All right, uh, I'm going to need you guys all to roll initiative. Ten. Eighteen. Seventeen. Uh, eighteen for me as well. What's your dex mod? Uh, one. My dex mod is plus, plus or minus? Plus. Plus one. Yeah, so is mine. Roll. All right, we got to see, see which one of us two. goes first. Got a twelve. I rolled a nineteen. All right. Looks like Jeff really is the hero. Yeah, he is. We shall. <laughs> Jeff yeah. Drunkle at it again. First up is going to be Jeff. All right. Jeff is going to cast Sacred Flame. Okay. Uh, and target the creature. Um, the creature needs to make a dexterity save throw. All right. It's got to be a 14. Well, a 17. Okay. Uh, so he takes no damage then. All right. Uh, the Zorn is going to look at Jeff and he's going to start to move from the middle of this room slightly to the right of the room on the other side of this column, and he's now more directly in front of you. Okay. Next okay. up is going to be Thomas. Thomas is going to draw his great axe. Okay. And he's going to charge at this thing and attack it. All right. Oh, that's nine versus AC. That is not going to hit. Thomas comes running up, and as he does, he grabs this great axe off his back and comes down with a swing, and this Zorn just uh, moves to the side slightly and kind of rotates its body, and this axe whizzes right in front of it. And then uh, it's actually going to, with one of its hands, it's going to just whack Thomas, and he's going to take one point of bludgeoning damage, and he's going to get knocked back towards the group. Uh, next up is going to be Leon. All right, boys, watch how this is done. All right, Leon's going to run straight at it, pull out his short sword, and make his first attack, because he has extra attack. Okay. First one is with his short sword. That is a 24. That's going to hit. All right. It's going to be... Eight slashing damage. And um, I'm also going to spend a key point to um, attempt stunning strike. He has to make a constitution saving throw or be stunned until the end of my next turn. Okay. That is a nine. That did not do it. All right. Stunned until the end of my next turn. And now I'm going to use my second attack, martial arts. 18 against AC. That is going to hit. And that's 11 bludgeoning damage. All right. And what are the stun mechanics? Incapacitated. Can't move and can speak only falteringly. Automatically fails strength and dexterity saving throws. And attack rolls against it have advantage. It can't take actions or reactions okay. until the end of my next turn. Like getting hit with a taser. Exactly. <laughs> next up is Alabaster. Am I within 60 feet of this creature? You are. Okay, then I'm going to cast Cloud of Daggers as a third level spell slot. Uh, 14 damage at the beginning of its next turn. All right, and that's your P- whole turn? Picture that as the time it takes for the daggers to kind of okay. form out of the air. Alabaster pulls upon his dark witchcraft and summons above him this dark storm cloud and dark daggers start to appear inside this cloud and it comes and sets itself down on top of this Zorn. Next up is the Zorn and he's he's completely railing from Leon's tack and he attempts to move forward and takes a, a drunken step and falls and all these daggers just batter him as he moves. Uh, and he's actually going to fall into this small little rock right here. And since he has no control over his ability, he actually phases half through this rock. So uh, the back of his body is outside, uh, and his mouth is stuck inside of this rock, uh, as is right now since he can't move. Top of the order is Jeff again. How close is he to me now? Probably about 30, 40 feet. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to move up. My movement speed is 25 feet. Okay. So I'm going to move up closer to him. 
All right. And then I'm going to cast Mirror Image. All right. Three illusionary duplicates of yourself appear in your space. Until the spell ends, the duplicates move with you and mimic your actions, shifting positions so it's impossible to track which image is real. Okay. The duration is one minute. What if what happens the if they get attacked? So if an attack hits a duplicate, the duplicate is destroyed. A duplicate can be destroyed only by an attack that hits it. It ignores all of their damage and effects. The spell ends when all three duplicates are destroyed. So do the duplicates have your AC then? Uh, no. Their AC is 10 plus my dex modifier. Every time somebody makes an attack on me, I roll a d20. Um, I think it's just straight up and down. Three duplicates, I have to roll a 6 or higher. With two duplicates, an 8 or higher. Or with one duplicate, an 11 or higher. Uh So basically, I roll if somebody attacks me. And then, if I succeed, the attack shifts to one of my duplicates. Okay. So, and that's your whole turn? Yeah. So, at this point, uh, Jeff has moved a little bit closer to the Zorn and has cast these four uh, illusions that look completely identical to him and just as ugly. Uh, <laughs> and dancing around Rip. him. Next up is going to be Thomas. Rinse and repeat. Do the same thing I did last time. Take my great axe and try and cleave at this feather mucker. Okay. So that is 18 versus AC. That'll hit. Okay. Uh, that's five slashing damage. With odd numbers? Odd numbers, it's uh, round down. Round down. So if it's half, it's going to be two. If it's double, when we are running down, so it's going to be two. Okay. Uh, next up is going to be Leon. Um, Leon's going to try to attack this... Zorn again. Okay. Every time I say that, for some reason I think of Power Rangers. Alright, first attack with a short sword. That's a 12 against AC. That will not hit. Okay, now his um, second attack with martial arts. Uh, 25 against AC. That will hit. Alright. 11 bludgeoning damage. And as a bonus action, I'm going to attack with um, another martial arts hit. 18 against AC. I'll hit. That's six bludgeoning damage. And I'm going to spend another key point to attempt stunning strike on it again. 11. That is not going to do it. He is stunned until the end of my next turn. Alright. Yeah, I'm gonna do Cloud of Daggers again as another second level spell. Okay. Uh, another 14 points of damage on the beginning of its turn. Alright. As Leon hit this Zorn with its stunning strike earlier, this Zorn is now pushed out of the rock and is now on the other side of this small pillar and... Then Alabaster once again calls upon his dark magic and creates another cloud that comes and descends upon this sword. And once again, as it tries to pick itself up and get it on its legs, these daggers just start whizzing, embedding themselves in this sword. Next up is going to be Jeff. It's about to get real weird now. (laughs) So Jeff is going to channel his divinity... And Invoke Duplicity. Uh, Invoke Duplicity creates a perfect illusionary double of me within 30 feet. And this illusion can be used as a conduit for spells cast, etc., etc. That's all that really matters right now. So in addition to the three mirrors that I have swirling around me, I'm going to Invoke Duplicity, make this mirror image of me. This mirror image will appear... um, We're going to say that he is 20 feet to my left. Okay. And then from the mirror image, I am going to cast... We'll do my my sacred flame cantrip. Uh, So you need to make a dexterity save throw. 17? Yep, that's going to do it. (laughs) (laughs) 
Imagine my disappointment when it's after two turns I learned my attack is halved. Is that your turn? Yeah, uh, I mean, I can't do so anything else. Jeff, once again, he, it looks like he grabs himself and almost pulls himself apart. And there are now five Jeffs running around. And this one that just was pulled apart, one of them runs over uh, a few feet away from him and casts a firebolt and attempts to throw it at this Zorn, but he's not a very good shot. <laughs> so, next up is Dad, Thomas. Dad never taught him how to play catch. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> How far away am I now from the Zorn? Ten feet. Okay. Uh, I'm going to back up 20 feet, and he's going to pull out both a hand axe and a javelin. He'll throw the uh, hand axe first. That's 19 versus AC. That will hit. Okay. And that is nine slashing damage. And then with the javelin... Uh, that's 17 versus AC. Uh, that will not hit. Gotcha. Thomas runs up, or uh, he backs actually, up. He, he pulls an axe <laughs> and a javelin from his back and throws the axe, and the axe embeds itself in the storm, and he throws the javelin. It does not quite make its mark, but this Zorn definitely takes a little bit of damage. Next up is going to be Leon. All right. Leon's going to do uh, his first short sword attack. 27 against AC. Yep. For nine points of damage. Next up is going to be a martial arts attack. 21 versus AC. Yep. For six points of bludgeoning damage. And he, as a bonus action, he's going to use another martial arts attack. 15 against AC. Wait, why can't you just make another martial arts attack? It's part of my martial arts skill. When you use the attack action with an unarmed strike or a monk weapon, such as a short sword, you can make one unarmed strike as a bonus action. You already did that. No, I have extra attack. I made two attacks and then I use my bonus attack. Gotcha. And that's all I'm doing for this. Did the 17 hit? No. Or it wasn't 17, it was 15. 15. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah. It's the Leon show. Leon runs up and slashes the Zorn and then kicks it and then <laughs> <laughs> does a backflip away like a fucking Power Ranger. <laughs> All right. Well, he's fighting a Zorn, so... After Leon kicks it this final time, this Zorn rolls over and gallops and jumps inside this rock off to the left, and this rock kind of is, um, uh, it, it starts near the ground, it kind of moves its way up, it's kind of like a... Like uh, a ramp? Yep, it's kind of like a ramp, uh, like a stone ramp, kind of like going up. Coward! And it jumps inside this. Oh, that's wait, wait, no fun. Does it okay. move, or is it stationary? It jumps inside this rock and, and doesn't move. Does it, like, seal up, or can I still see it? It's inside the rock. Remember, it can face the rocks. Oh. It's all the way inside. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Are we still in initiative? Yes. Fuck. <laughs> um, can I target the rock? You can try. <laughs> you will try. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, what, what do you plan on doing? I was going to use Eldritch Blast. Is the rock about the size of the Zorn, or is it bigger? Bigger. So it's kind of, is it like, are we talking about like trying to hit a needle in a haystack, or are we no, trying to, no, no, no. we trying to talk about hitting big birds standing behind a cherry tree? <laughs> Neither <laughs> Those of Those are two things. vastly different scenarios. Yeah. You're trying to hit like a big bird in a small haystack. <laughs> <laughs> So just if look I above beat this AC, AC, does it take, like, maybe half damage, are we talking? How about if you want to try and use Elder Blast on <laughs> this fucking try and rock? Use try Blatt. and use Elder Blast. Bronson, Blatt. you're okay. trying to shoot on a fish rock. that's okay. been frozen in ice with a shotgun. I like my odds. Best analogy I can come up with. That's a 17. All right. Um, roll damage, I guess, on Elder Blast. Okay. So the I will roll a second one for that. By the way, a second what? What? A second attack because at the fifth level oh it becomes God. two beams of energy. Oh okay. 
So in the second one, you have to treat like a second attack, but it's just the same one. I'll roll for the second beam. If he's going all... Well, that's a seven, so that's probably not going to hit. Nope. Okay. Now, how did his 17 hit? Because he's not attacking the Zorn, he's attacking the Rock. And I said the Rock's AC at 15. Got you. Uh, that's a six. All right. A small, dark ball energizes in his hands, and he lets out this beam of energy towards this rock, and it drills a hole straight through the rock, and you see this eyeball go and look right out the rock at you guys, and uh, the Zorn itself does not take any damage, but you see him slip out the side back of the rock, back into this gap where you can see him now. Next up is the Zorn. This Zorn is going to run up, uh, and who, who, who's right in front? Thomas, right? Yeah. yeah. He's gonna run at Thomas, and he's going to make a claw attack. Okay. That's a six for AC. Nope. And then it's gonna make a second claw attack. Fifteen for AC. Yep. Alright. You're gonna take four points of damage. Okay. Of slashing damage. Okay. Uh, and then he's going to turn his attention to Leon. He's going to make a claw attack. Uh, that's a four. Uh, that would be a hard miss. And then he's going to make a bite attack. That is a 16 versus AC. That's a miss. All right. Uh, and then he's going to, after m- making this chomp, at Leon, Leon uses his master monk skills to just move out of the way, complete juke him. He's going to gallop back and burrow inside this small rock right here in the middle of the room. Next up is going to be Jeff. Okay, I'm just going to run up and two-handed hit this motherfucker with my warhammer. Okay. Just smash this rock. That's a three. Jeff comes running up to this rock and grabs his war hammer and comes and just goes to make this mighty strike and he hits the, the rock and it was like he hit it with a t-ball bat. Just kind of bounces off. A wiffle ball bat. But this Zorn actually pops out of the rock, doesn't like the rock getting hit, uh, and he tries to burrow down into the ground. And as he does, he gets pushed out uh, and a small hole in the ground opens and water kind of starts spewing out. And then two holes back by the gate of the room pop out on the side of the wall. And this water is now seeping into this room uh, and slowly filling the room. Next up is Thomas. You know what? Fucker. Thomas is going to grab hold of the totem around his neck. The totem of the spirit bear. Okay. And... Utilizes his rage power. Uh, all the totem does is it gives him resistance to all damage except psychic instead of just what rage does. But yeah, so he's going to do that as a bonus action is engage rage. <laughs> and then he's going to uh, utilize a reckless attack on it. Okay. So reckless attack, I can attack recklessly on the first attack of my turn. I'll do the great X again, so it's my only tur- attack. Okay. Uh, giving advantage on strength melee weapon attacks. But attack rolls against you have advantage until your next turn. So I have advantage on my attack. You have extra attack. I do? Yeah, we're fifth level. Oh yeah, I only went up to level four when I was looking at these. Yeah, so um, I guess I'll utilize my extra attack that I apparently have. Yep. Both with the great axe. So. Well, fuck. On the first attack, it's just five, so it's not going to hit. And the second attack is 24 versus AC. That will hit. Okay. And then... Eight slashing damage. As the Zorn pops out of this small rock coming out of the ground, Thomas comes running up with his great axe, rage full in his eyes, full on dead sprint. And this Zorn says, Oh, hell no, I ain't about to get slashed to bits. And starts running towards the back wall of this cavern. 
and and Thomas is chasing after him. He takes his axe and just bats him right into the wall. And as he does, he hits him so hard that the wall breaks and the Zorn goes flying down through this wall and into this cavern that's just on the other side of this wall. And you hear a, a loud splat and a small clank as it hits the bottom of the cavern. Hey, Andrew. Hey, Maddie. Do you like horror movies? I sure do. Well, did you know that most horror movies are inspired by real-life horror? Really? Like what? Well, take The Shining, for instance. That's based on Stephen King's real-life addictions, or The Purge, which could be our country any minute now. Oh, and The Strangers, which is based on a real-life murder. People should be talking about these things. Hey, Guys. Oh, oh, hey, Producer, producer Michael. Michael oh, well, I hate to break it to you, but somebody already is. It's you. <gasps> That's right. We are Friday the 13th, the podcast where we talk about horror in real life and horror in media, all from an LGBTQ perspective. Because we gay, y'all. We are proud members of the Legion Podcast Network, and we can be found on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, or wherever your favorite podcasts are found. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Come along with us on this crazy journey. And as always, get slayed. Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Thanks for listening to part two of the Saint Sauna's Day special. Before we get back to the episode, I have a few notes. First up, just a reminder that the next episode of the podcast will be episode 21 of the Return of Ornon campaign, which puts us back on our alternating release schedule between our two main campaigns. Next, I'd like to remind you you can find us on social media, namely on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Our handle on social media is Realms Nerds, R-E-A-L-M-S-N-E-R-D-S. And when you make a post on social media about the podcast, we ask you to remember to include the hashtag RealmsNerds, spelled the same way as our social media handle. Speaking of social media, we also recently started up a Discord community group for fans of projects under our entertainment group, Homebrew Entertainment, which at present includes this podcast, the Cedar Country Podcast, my video game streaming stuff, and eventually the upcoming Days of Disney and Great Lakes Dark Zone podcasts. You can find a link to the Discord in the episode description as well as in our Instagram bio. If you like what you've heard, please leave us a rating. It really helps us out. And if you know anybody else you think would like the podcast, be sure to let them know. We are on several platforms, including but not limited to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and our hosting site, Podbean. Thank you for all the congratulatory messages for our two-year anniversary back on March 15. It really means a lot to us. And we're really happy to be able to share our D&D adventures with you all. Thank you to our buddy Kyle, as always, for composing the main theme of our podcast. Thank you to every one of you for listening. We super appreciate you. Take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and remember to keep your chin up. I'll talk to you later. Now let's get back into the Saint Sauna Special Part 2. Hi, I'm Cody. And I'm Christian. And we're Nerds with Friends. Not just two nerds who have some friends. No, we're your hosts for the podcast, Nerds with Friends. We cover any topic that people can nerd out over, from TV, movies, and comics, to conventions, tabletop RPGs, and much more. Nerds with Friends comes out every Tuesday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher. And of course, on our website, NerdsWithFriendsPodcast.com. Join us every week as we confess our nerdy confessions and talk about the latest in nerdy news. And remember, you're not alone. You're with friends. This is Nerds with Friends. Thank you for listening. Now back to the show. As Thomas turns around, still raising his eyes and looks at the other three compatriots standing in the room, they all just have an awing look on their faces. They stare back at Thomas. We better make sure it's fucking dead. Or I'm gonna make sure you're all fucking dead. Um, is everything uh, alright in there? Sana comes running into the room, kind of dazed and a little dizzy. Oh yeah, we just kicked some ass and took some names. Um, great. Why is that hole in the wall? Well, well uh, he did it. <laughs> yeah, you see, uh, Thomas kinda knocked the creature through the wall, man. It's, uh, it's not great over there. Uh, Th- Thomas is now crawling through to the other side. This is a pit. 
Oh, on the other side. Yourself. It, it's a wall that goes straight. Also, you probably wouldn't have to crawl. This is a big oh. creature. Yeah. Well, he's gonna he's gonna like peer over and look down. He's gonna like look and see if he can see its dead body down there to confirm. All right. I guess roll up perception check, my dude. Twenty one. You look down in this pit, and as you look down, there's there's some light coming in from somewhere down there. And um, you can see the, the thinnest outline of this Zorn body and the slightest shimmer of its its open dead eye. <laughs> it's fucking dead. Hell yeah. Yeah, well... We, you know, we don't normally just make random holes in walls without checking what's behind them first. He's going to take his great axe and just, like, slam the, the butt end into the ground. I do what I want. Well, we should probably go check out what's down there. A dead thing. I just looked. Yeah, and what do you think is at the bottom of the cavern? A dead thing. Hey, uh, Sana, um, so, like, kind of a quick question, but, uh, did you not know about this, like, deep, dark cavern, in, like, right up in your space? No, we did not. <laughs> this area has not been used for quite some time. It kind of seems like poor planning, man, you know, like, I kind of want to know where you're at, you know, spiritually, mentally, but, uh-huh. like, physically is kind of important, too. Well, I'm going to go down there and check it out. I'm right there with you. Let's go. So you going to, like, make a waterfall for us, or should we uh, Fuck, get some why milk? not? And she just make <laughs> a fucking waterfall going down here. Dope, man. All right, let's go. Leon jumps straight in the hole. I guess we descend by waterfall. Thomas, who was kind of partially blocking the way, definitely dove in first after, gushed, after, the water, <laughs> after the waterfall got made, yeah. Leon swan dives in. And he's definitely going to hold his great axe behind him in the hopes that uh, Leon will accidentally be cleft by it, because he's still out to kill Leon. The five of you now get up from this small pool that this waterfall just made, and there's a passageway that has some glimmering light coming from the end of it. And you guys all uh, a bit cautiously make your way down this passage, and it opens up to a giant cavern full of gold and gems, rubies. Thomas is going to start making his way to the money to take it. (laughs) No, 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 don't touch that! Why shouldn't I? I'm going to cast Hold Person. (laughs) Ha ha! So, you need to make a wisdom saving throw. No. Yes. Okay. And that's against my... Oh, wisdom saving throw. That's your spell casting. Spell casting. DC, yeah. Well, that's a five. Okay. Well, I, I know that you're not, that's not going to be the... So. You are paralyzed for the duration. At the end of each of your turns, the target can make another wisdom saving throw. On a success, the spell ends... On the target. How does it so work outside I guess of since we're not in combat, I'll just leave it up to the DM to decide when you're allowed to make wisdom saving throws. How long, how long, has, it, how long has it been since we I like killed that creature? Like a minute? Okay, then rage is worn off. It just says paralyzed for the duration. Like it um, get turned to stone or does it just stop wherever he was? Let's see, a paralyzed creature is incapacitated and can't move or speak. Automatically fails strength and dex throws, attacks against a have advantage, and any attack that hits the creature is a critical hit if the attack goes within five feet. As Thomas goes running for the cash in front of him, Jeff puts out his hand and goes to freeze him, but Thomas is already reaching down for the gold, and as he gets stunned, he just slowly moves forward as his rock-like body. Leon runs to grab him before he falls all the way to the ground. Make a, um, dexterity check. Straight up dex check? Yeah. That's a 22. Dex check, Juliet. Leon goes sprinting for this body of, of, of Thomas's and is just about to hit the gold, and he slides and grabs him and pulls him back right before he catches the gold. 
Oh, that was close. Oh, buddy. Better watch yourself there, bud. And Thomas does not respond as he cannot <laughs> speak at this moment. Thomas cannot come to the phone right now. <laughs> <laughs> Please leave your death wish after the tone. Guys, um, I think we're in a dragon den. Sweet. No, not sweet. Dragons are a fucking bitch to kill, okay? I've had a lot of experience. Trust me. Well, hey, man, maybe, like, we should figure out what kind of dragon it is, like, see if we need to do something about this. Yeah, I mean... You know, like, know. all sneaky-like. <sighs> Fine. Stealth it up. I don't want to hear a single one of you even reach for a coin, step on a piece of gold, or anything. All right, you won't hear us reach for a piece of gold. Jeff is going to reach forward and, um, using his blessing of the trickster, he's going to touch Leon here and say, Hey, why don't you, uh, why don't you go check out what's going on up there? All right, that was just what I was thinking. And Leon starts making his way in, avoiding any and all coins, if at all possible. All right, uh, I need you to make the initial stealth check. And you have advantage on stealth now. Sweet. Unnatural 20. As Leon makes his way between these small piles of gold, these piles on either side of him slowly get a little bit larger and larger. And he winds his way through these piles and finds himself at these steps that go up. It appears at some time this was some kind of castle or perhaps a watchtower or some sort of larger stone building. But now these steps are riddled with small pieces of gold and gems. I'm going to need you to make another self check. All right. Uh, 25. As he makes his way very carefully up these steps, paying close attention to mind his toes and move between these small pieces, he finds himself at the top of these steps and on another passage that leads across this walkway and over to his right, this giant mound of gold and riches is built up. And he's about, at this point, level with the top of this mound. And I need you to roll a perception check. Uh, 15. As Leon looks over, on top of this mound, he sees a dark purple obsidian ball that has glistening scales and large black leathery wings and two giant purple horns coming up next to its eyes. And he notices that this is a young red shadow dragon. A very... Without even uttering a breath, mouths to himself. Oh, shit. So I see the dragon. I know where it is. I'm going to sneak my way back to the group and let them know what's the one. All right, I'm going to need you to make two stealth checks again. Blum, blum, two. Blum, 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 blum. Okay, here's the first one. I still have advantage, right? Yes. Never. You have advantage, uh, just to throw that out, you have advantage for up to an hour or if I use it on somebody else. All right, the first one's a 26. Okay. Oh, and the second one's a nat 20. What if you, like, critically uh, failed on one of the rolls both times? Yeah, my, my stealth modifier is plus 8, so. Just crashes into a pile of gold. No, nope. I'm fucking Batman. Leon stealthily makes his way back across this walkway, down the steps, and through the winding path between these gold mounds and finds himself back at the group. All right, guys. Listen here. I just saw a young red shadow dragon sleeping on a giant-ass mound of gold. It's up there, and like I said, she's sleeping, so we might be able to take her for really stealthy about it. Who's game? So Jeff would like to see if there is any... um. Like any defensible positions around where we are now. Okay. Roll a perception check. Uh, it's 14. 
As Jeff looks around this room, he notices that on this ground level, really the only cover are these these mounds of gold. Most of them are fairly tall. I mean, uh, even the small ones are around six feet, and you know, on average. There's this big mound in the middle that is about 20 feet or so tall. And then there's this walkway that goes up and over in the center of the room by this mound. So, I mean, that's really the positions of, of the vents you'd have. Okay, so are any do any of them look like they would be good ambush positions? As far as, like, ambush goes... The best way to get to the dragon would be the walkway. Sure, but like, say if somebody was hiding, like, are there spots, like these defensible positions, could you like hide, are there, is there like a way you could hide near these, behind the mounds of gold or whatever, are they big enough? Yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, Leon, about how far was it uh, from here up to where that dragon is? Well, you go down the cavern a ways, and you come to a staircase. The staircase leads up to this kind of tower thingy, and there's this giant-ass mound right next to it, and that's right where the dragon is. I don't know, maybe 50 feet or so down the cavern. Okay, so DM. Oh, see, what does that work out to in feet? You just said that. F- 50 feet. 50 feet. 50-foot cavern, right. and then you go up a tower, and then there's that big-ass mound. And there's more on the other side. I mean, the cavern itself is probably about... So, like, total distance from where I am to the dragon. 50 feet sounds about right. About 50 feet. So he's not very far. Actually, maybe, all. no, maybe. So he'd be, well, be he's, far he's if can't see him. a long it way. Maybe about so. like 70 feet. All right, dudes. Well, here's my thought, all right? We find some good positions in here to lay in wait for a good bushwhacking. And then uh, I use my... Uh, my spell, my illusion spell to uh, send a fake me up there and attack this dragon, get him to come down all uh, disoriented-like, and then we hit him. Oh, I like this plan. Hi, uh, I'm on board. Um, I don't know if that's the best plan. What's your plan? Well, wait a century until it wakes up? I didn't finish, but... I was going to say, let's fucking run it, guys. Hey, listen here, lady, all right? I don't care if you're, like, a god or whatever. I don't run away from problems. I save the town. So uh, (laughs) running's not really an option. Yeah. I also created the town that you live in. So where do we stand in life? Well, apparently you stand a lot farther back than I do. But that's just, like, metaphysics or whatever, man. Okay. Anyways, uh, I guess we've got uh, consensus. Let's uh, find some good spots to hide. Let's run it. All right. Is there a, any way I can get on one of these piles of gold before the dragon gets to us? There is a way. What is A good say? enough check. I mean, he's also... Hey, the- you just have to be really sneaky about it. I mean, you do still have your stealth advantage. True. But also, the dragon is probably going to make a lot of noise when it wakes up after getting... Well, I wasn't talking about being stealthy. I meant just getting on one of the big, big mounds that's way up tall or something. I'm trying to get above the dragon. There is no point higher than the dragon. Okay, fuck it. Let's let's go with it. No, because the dragon's coming down to us. We're No, I know that. I meant when it comes down and say it landed, I wanted to be above it. I want to jump on the dragon's back, for God's sake. When it lands, assuming it lands on the ground, you could be above it if you were on the big mound of gold. All right, I'll figure that out later. Let's let's do it. Well, I mean, you probably should figure out where you're going to hide at least before I do what I do. I don't know, behind a pile of gold. Okay. I'll hide behind one of the bigger mounds. All right, so you guys are all picking mounds to hide yeah. behind. Yeah, sure. I mean, as of right now, I'm still a frozen statue. Oh, so. that's right. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I guess, um... We can send him up there. Hey, you guys, like, uh, hold on to him real quick here. Uh, Leon grabs a hold of him. And then I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna dispel my hold person spell. Ah! Oh, my jaw. You know, I was frozen, not deaf. I could still hear everything. Are you on board? Dumbass. As long as I yeah, get man, the gold like, afterward. Fine. Yeah, man, like, I know how my spells work. As long as, long as I get the gold afterward. 
I'm fine with fighting this thing. Let's do it. Okay, so yeah. Guess we're all just kind of hiding around here. So then I'm going to cast my mirror image again. So I'm actually out of second level spell slots now. I've really been burning these things. Yeah, that's why I stopped using my key points. Well, you know what? It was worth. It's worth it. <laughs> going to cast this uh, mirror image. Uh, well, first, you guys all have to find your hiding spots. Okay, I hide behind one of the big mounds. Are you guys I'll all pick just, a good one. You guys all just pick yep. a different mound scattered yep. about? about? Sure. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So anyways, I conjure this uh, exact duplicate of myself, and then after I've conjured it, um, it's going to stand briefly, like right in the clearing between all of the it's gold mounds that we're hiding in, and then I direct it to go up to the chamber that Leon indicated that the dragon is in. Is it going to start yodeling at the top of the tower? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> okay. Um... As soon as he gets up there, uh, my duplicate here is going to cast Sacred Flame at the dragon. Okay. So the dragon needs to make a uh, dexterity save. Which, I guess if it's sleeping, does it even have a dexterity save? Dragons are always... 15. <sighs> we gonna die. Yeah, I guess it dodges we're gonna that. Go, we're gonna go out and blaze of glory. I will use my Sacred Flame before we're done with this. <laughs> Uh, I'll burn down the damn forest if I have to. <laughs> I'll burn down this damn forest. I don't know how this dra- I don't know how this dragon does dexterity saves when it's asleep, but apparently I, it does. So I don't. Hit it's seventeenth it. sense makes it shift to the right. <laughs> it's seventeenth sense. As Jeff's duplicate comes clanking up this mound, this dragon starts to uh, fidget a little bit. And then this flame comes and lands and actually hits the dragon. It kind of just simmers for a second and then the flame just dies out and it looks as though smoke comes over the flame and kills it. And then you see this blue light come from the top of this mound and then uh, a, a blue flame roars above this and suddenly you see this dragon jump up with these giant black wings and come and land on top of this walkway and is looking down over this land. Uh, when Jeff sees that, he is going to, or I guess move his, uh, his mirror image to the spot on the floor, basically in the middle of where we're all hiding. The dragon is going to telepathically say something to all of you. You do not belong here. Little one, I divide you and me before I get angry. Does it hear our thoughts, or...? Uh, it, it is telepathic. It's not aware of your presence, uh, exactly. I think it's just, isn't time. it just, like, telepathically talking aloud? So yes. just broadcast, okay. So just broadcasting that thought. This dragon says this and hears nothing. It's going to do a perception check to try and smell you guys out. What you guys is ACs? AC is 14, 13, 15, 17. This dragon reaches its neck forward and takes a few sniffs and looks around the room and then says, You are a tricky bunch. I will say it again. Leave now before I get angry. And you start to see some smoke billow from this dragon's mouth. Jeff is going to talk using his double. And so uh, he is go- the, the double is going to say, Hey man, I'm like here to fuck your shit up, so <laughs> just bring it. <laughs> and this dragon is just going to look at this mirror image. And it's going to shoot a stream of blue fire out and it just evaporates this mirror image, and the dragon itself is not even sure if it was a mirror image or if it was just a being that got completely evaporated. I know there are more throughout there. Leave. Leanne's going to pick up a handful of coins and uh, chuck them as far away from him as he can. 
Okay. Just to make some random ass noise. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, it just watches the coins fly. Ting, ting, ting. And then looks back. <laughs> Found you. <laughs> then you get strength. In a very Tim Curry voice. Oh, God. Found you. Found you. That's an, <laughs> That's an 11 from the halfling. This dragon watches these coins fly up. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to take its wing and it's going to swing its wing and this entire pile that Leon is hiding behind, all these gold pieces just get picked up and just thrown across the room and Leon is now standing in the open. Leon's going to flip the dragon off and try to run for another pile. Do you mean there's you mean quite the, some uh, sound cloud, effects? That do you mean the uh, that. cloud of uh, the Leon-shaped cloud of dust? <laughs> <laughs> he gone. All right, and at this point, I need you all to roll initiative. Okay. Fifteen for me. Four. Twenty. Twenty-four. All right. This dragon. Seeing where Leon is running to, jumps off from where uh, it was perched and lands right behind him and goes to make a claw attack. 15 versus 18. That is a miss. Alright. It's going to make a second slash attack. 23 versus 18. Yeah, that's that's definitely going to hit. Alright. Uh, it's going to make one more claw attack. Fuck Every duck. Uh, it's going to be another 15. That's not going to hit. All right. I should consider myself lucky, I suppose. It's going to be 11 damage. Okay. 11 slashing damage. And then this dragon, after slashing at Leon a few times, is going to look up in the sky and roar while letting fire and smoke out of its mouth. How tall is this fucker? This dragon is... Do you mean, like, tip to tail, or do you mean, like, I'm talking height-wise. Standing, standing up on four legs, How about how high he is compared to me. Probably, like, ten feet or so. Oh, that's not bad. Ten to fifteen feet, somewhere in that range. Okay, okay, now we're starting to get to the ranges of height. Anyway. Next up is going to be a Leon. While this dragon is, um, roaring his fucking heart out... Leon would love to try and make a dash up one of its rear hind legs and try to attack its leg if he can. Okay. Make a attack roll. Short sword first, I guess. 24 against AC. Uh, that'll hit. Alright. That's uh, 10 slashing damage. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take my second attack and do another one with my sword. That's 15 against AC. Uh, that'll not hit. Okay, and as a bonus action, I'm going to use my unarmed strike against it. Okay. I critically failed that one. All right, and this dragon is going to take a reaction attack and attempt to throw Leon off its leg. That's going to be a 24 versus AC. Yeah, that'll do it. Jeff, Jeff, he's our man. If he can't, it's gonna be seventeen him. damage. Holy God! Yeah, Leon, Leon McJenkins ain't looking too good. I mean, how yeah, but how about how about health wise? Uh, he throws you uh, <laughs> ten feet, uh, kind of off to the side. So you're now actually, uh, if your team is over here on the dragons here, you're like over here now. All right. So you're kind of like how far away from me was he when I ran at him? 10 feet, 15 right. feet. I'm going to use the rest, last of my, like, say, 20 feet and move away from that spot where I landed. Okay, you're going to, like, jump behind another pile of... Yeah, jump behind another pile of gold, I guess. Okay. Uh, next up is going to be Thomas. How close am I to the dragon? Like, uh, specifically its close. front? Okay. He was He basically brought the dragon right to you guys. Okay. Thomas is going to use the power of the spear bear roar and... <laughs> Trigger another rage. Okay. And uh, he's going to utilize another reckless attack and uh, extra attack. And he is going to uh, try and do kind of like a sliding under and hack at it from underneath as he slides past to the other side. Okay. Um, make a athletics check with advantage from the first. Okay. 
That's 25. Okay. Proceed with rolls. Okay. Okay, the first one is 24 versus AC. That will hit. And then the second one is 12 versus AC. That second one will not hit. Okay, so for the first one... 7. Okay. Thomas comes running at this dragon with his axe, and he goes and makes a beautiful slide under the neck and slashes him right kind of by what would be like the collarbone area of this dragon by its front legs, and then rolls out from underneath the dragon and sprints off and jumps behind another pile of gold. Uh, Next up is going to be Jeff. Jeff is going to cast Bane. So I need the dragon to make a charisma saving throw. Okay. Critical fail, man. Damn. Okay, well, all right then. For one minute, so ten turns of combat, whenever the target um, makes an attack roll or a saving throw, the target must roll a d4 and subtract the number rolled from the attack roll or saving throw. Okay. Jeff runs and throws his hands out and casts this spell on this dragon. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Jeff isn't running anywhere. Okay. <laughs> Je- Jeff is. Jeff is a stationary boy. I mean, this this thing is <laughs> this thing is still pretty close to him. He's Jeff, just hiding behind the. Okay, let me let me <laughs> behind let me the gold still. Jeff peeks out from over <laughs> the top of this pile of gold. Puts his f- one finger out, does a, does a good old fashioned, you know, flish, flick and twist. Uh, what is it? Swish, swish and flick. Swish, flick. And flick. swish and flick. Swish and flick. G- gives a good old swish and flick and. Uh, Bippity boppity boo. And this dragon kind of seems to stumble for just a second as he looks dazed and then uh, gets his bearings again. And it's going to be Sana's turn now. And she's going to. Run at this dragon and uh, take her short swords and make some slashes at the front legs of this dragon. And then is going to use uh, a disengage to bounce back. And uh, she's going to just hit this dragon for 20 damage. Holy crap. Hero of the land much? That would be Jeff. <laughs> uh, <laughs> next up is going to be Alabaster. Finally, Alabaster. He's, to the uh, he's going to peek out from behind a pile of coins and cast Eldritch Blast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just just slowly, like, leans out and slowly... That's moves. a 13. Versus AC? Versus AC. That will not hit. Alabaster peeks out Go and, ahead. Nope. <laughs> and does some, some black magic witchcraft, and uh, you just see this beam go right past the dragon. <laughs> uh, and this dragon's actually up next and sees this beam of light go past him and looks right at Alabaster's direction, leaps into the air and hovers as he blasts a shadow breath attack in Alabaster's direction at the Ooh. pile he bought. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's the uh what's the saving throw? Each creature in the area oh it's a thirty foot cone. Good so God. Uh, he's gonna... What's the saving throw? One second. He's gonna catch Alabaster, Sana, and, um... Jeff or Thomas? It would be Thomas, because they're the... Well... No, Thomas is out of the way. Am what? I out of the way? Because I was throwing kind yeah, of... Yeah, you're over... Uh, you're all... You're out in Goonsville. Yeah, you so guys So it's are... probably Jeff, right? I'm yep, in the and Jeff. Box. The three of you are all gonna get caught inside this. Each creature in the area must make a DC 18 dexterity saving throw. Oh, boy! Screw me again. Hell no! To the hell, hell no! Oh. <laughs> oh. That's a 13 for your boy. Lucky 13! For me as well. Okay, nice. Uh, you guys are both going <laughs> to take full damage. Sonic's going to take half damage. Ugh. Rip a roll. I don't know if I want to be this mean to you guys. I'm literally Go gonna... for it. Oh, uh, you guys are dead. <laughs> uh, I was say, if he wasn't the healer, <laughs> I'd are, say do it. You guys are literally fucking dead. I'm sorry. Are we, though? Our are first we? first game where we all die. All right. We'll see. 
half of 62 is 31, so Sonic takes 31 damage, and you guys take 62 damage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jeff, uh, Jeff is uh, bleeding uh, out. So Al- Alabaster is... <laughs> crisp. Yeah, he is... He's burning to a crisp while making a fist bump version of right. motion towards Jeff. A humanoid reduced to zero hit points by this damage dies, and an undead shadow rises from its corpse and acts immediately after the dragon in the initiative count. The shadow is under the dragon's control. Yeet! Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> shadow, Jeff and Shadow Alvaster. It's just Yeet. Leon and Thomas... It's Wait, Sonic. hold on. Did Sona die? No. She's at 90. Come on, Sona. <laughs> Come on, Sona. Wait, she's a ranger. She better have a fucking healing spell. Have the power of heals. Wait, what if she dies from this attack? How does she gets reborn and she has it? Yeah. And does she get reborn in the same spot? Is oh it my instantaneous? God, That's, there's so many questions. It's, <laughs> it's Sora and Roxas. Good God. Is she born at the same skill she, level, or does she come back she differently comes, she comes each back time? Level twenty, and you're just like, oh, okay. <laughs> Fuck. My or comes game. back as a level one. It has to work her way back up. Oh my god, she's just a none baby. of her she's gear. A baby when she comes back, and she's just okay. So the shadows are under the dragon's control, correct? Correct. Fuck sake. Do they basically run like? A, a, is it all the same, like, attacks and things for their their characters? Yeah. Or is, okay, I didn't know if it was that. Or all right, was, so... Thomas, we gotta finish this fight. First up is going to be Shadow Jeff. Uh, Shadow Jeff is going to make an attack at Leon. Okay. Come at me, Broski. Um, just like a... He said an attack. Okay, so I guess I'll come at you with my Warhammer. Uh, 11 against AC. That is a hard no. Okay. Alright, next up is going to be Shadow Alabaster. He's going to make an attack at Sun. Alright, I'm going to use uh, both my daggers for that. Okay. First one is... It's a 17. That'll hit. Three points of damage. Okay. Second one is going to be 15. That'll not hit. Alright. Alright, next up is Leon. So Thomas is going to shout at him, Focus on the dragon. Maybe if you kill the dragon, they'll disappear. Alright. Either way, they're already dead. Alright then, (laughs) let's do it. Guts and glory, baby. And um, he's going to... For the money. He's going to spend a key point to um, use the dash action as a bonus action. So my uh, movement speed is doubled, and my jump distance is doubled. Okay. He's going to dash up the pile of gold, and he's going to take a flying fucking leap at that dragon, aiming for its eye with his short sword. Okay. Make a... You're dex- talking about a nat 20 Make circumstance here, bro. acrobatic Rob. check with advantage. Okay. That's a 26. Okay, and I'll make that. That is a uh, 23. That will hit. No for damage. Stab his fucking eye out. By the way, he's not going to let go after he stabs his eye out. He's just going to be dangling on there. That's uh, 10 points of uh, slashing damage, or whatever you want to call it. Okay. And um, he's going to take his uh, extra attack and um, use an unarmed strike and just kick it. Just punch okay. him in the start, Just start doing some fucking monk kicks at it. <laughs> Okay, fair spewers, day off. That's um twenty four against AC. That'll hit as well. And that's uh six points of bludgeoning damage. And I'm gonna spend another key point to attempt a stunning strike on it. Okay. So it needs to roll a Constitution saving throw. And fifteen. Yeah, that does it. He's not stunned. Okay. He's probably very angry. Leon comes running and jumps off this mound, short sword, double-handed, and just plunges it right into this dragon's deep, blue, fiery eye, and it just explodes with this goo out on his sword. (laughs) It's glowing blue, and then he he takes and switches to holding on with just his left hand and just starts making these hammer kicks and punches at this dragon, and... 
Next up is going to be Thomas. Thomas is going to uh, take his great axe and he's going to run. Uh, well, first he's got to he's going to use a bonus action to activate his third rage because his other one wore off since no one attacked him or anything. Okay. So <laughs> he's got to do that. Sun's um, getting real low, big guy. <laughs> But then he's going to uh, run underneath to about where he thinks the heart would be and uh, attack and extra attack with his great axe. And then afterwards, uh, he's going to get out from underneath it, uh, okay. behind it. All right, so the first one is 19 versus AC. That'll hit. And then the second one is 14 versus AC. That will not hit. Seven damage. Okay. Next up is Sana. She's going to, as she sees Leon hanging from the dragon's eye, is going to attempt to jump up off its leg and make some slashes on the neck while it's throwing its neck to the side, trying to get Leon off. It's going to take 14 points of damage. And next up is going to be the dragon. First, he's going to make a claw attack at Leon, who's on his face trying to claw and grab him off. Leon's going to die. <laughs> he's he's going to be 17. Doubt. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You, if you're adding anything, it hit him. Yeah. 12 damage. Oh my god, Leon Leon died. At least he's not a shadow beast. I did beast. die by that. Yeah, shadow beast. Yeah, so you're not a shadow so. creature. You're just I'm incapacitated down. currently. Currently incapacitated, yeah. Just Ood's gray. <laughs> you're just on the ground in a heap. <laughs> Dragon's then going to make a, another slash reaching now at Sana. And he's going to miss that attack. And he's going to make his third claw attack at Sana's. Who's behind him, for the record? That's true. Yeah. Well, I can't make a tail attack. Yeah. But um, Whatever. it's not going to hit anyways. Okay. Next up, it's going to command... Do you guys both have... Jeff. Jeff? Do you guys Jeff. both have uh, <laughs> some kind of throwable weapon? Um, yes. I, I, I have a like crossbow. All right, well, he's going to have both of you guys make attacks on Thomas. And on um, Sana. Okay. Okay, so I'm, I'm rolling range? Yeah. Okay. I also have a light cross. Oh. Who's attacking who? You're attacking Sana. No. I'm a, no? No, wait. Yeah. 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 You're attacking, yeah, you're attacking Sana. Uh, 21 versus AC. It's an 11 from me. That will not hit Thomas. That How the hell is hit. Thomas the only one still alive? Sana. The money. <laughs> the money. This just the money. Empowering him. That'll be 13 damage. Okay. I don't think I've landed anything today. <laughs> Not even as a shadow boy. Can't rule for shit. <laughs> it's that die. Sana gets an arrow to the side, and she's starting to bleed out as she falls behind this pile of gold. And up now is Leon. Oh, yeah, I gotta make, you gotta make a death I, saving roll. I gotta make a death saving you're not, you're not dead. You're just bleeding out. I'm not dead yet. 20. That was a fail for the first one. Sad. Sad. I'm not dead yet. So, oh, Thomas is conscious. I well, feel happy. Thomas is gonna uh, run back to the underbelly in the same spot and do another two attacks. Alright, the first one is 17 against AC. No. No? Not the first one. All right, well, the second one is uh, 18 against AC. That will hit. Okay. 14 damage. Okay. Uh, and then, oh, and then he's going to run back behind the dragon. Thomas runs out again, makes another slash, and then jumps and rolls behind another pile of gold. And the dragon is now getting pretty furious. He's going to take his wings and he's going to flap them in all these gold piles near him are just going to get blown away, and now there's just this circle of just straight open space, and he's standing in the middle of it. Leon, you're actually up again. That's a save. A success. Thomas? Oh, uh, he's gonna run underneath and attack him again. Okay. Neither of those are gonna land. 
Then he's going to, uh, I guess, run back out behind the dragon. Uh, as Thomas comes running up, this dragon is going to actually go to bat him away and then make a claw attack against him. 24 versus yep. AC. <laughs> We're all about to die. Do you have not rage anymore? It's going to be for 11 damage. Okay. As Thomas gets battered away by this dragon, he looks up to the sky again and gives a mighty roar. And San, who's bleeding out in the middle of this open space, says, Oh, I'm not going to do this again. And slowly you see this room just start to fill with water. And it starts getting higher and higher and... The two of you who are still passed <laughs> out alive. and uh, alive, yeah, yeah uh, are trying to, uh, you know, stay above the water, but the water's rising so fast, you just kind of are getting pushed up every once in a while, you know, getting some air, and suddenly this whole room is just completely filled with water, and you see this dragon start to get some struggles and it's trying to breathe and it's letting out fire and you see the smoke and this water it's really warm and you see it start to boil as this dragon is fighting for air and it's trying to stay alive and then you see Sana go full on monk you know just the the whole concentration last airbender style as as she's just (laughs) glowing and you just see this the water is being is almost like it's getting Push together, and the water itself is almost becoming like a solid and a liquid, and it's just this glowing ball of energy. And she lets this energy out, and as she does, the room is dispensed of this water, and the two of you fall to the ground. And this dragon falls right next to you guys, comes crashing down to the ground, and it, it is stumbling and not looking so good. And uh, Sana stumbles over and grabs Leon and pulls him to his feet and then stumbles over and grabs Thomas and pulls him to his feet and says, You want to finish this fucker with me? Yeah. She puts a sword in Leon's hand and grabs one out of her sheath. And the three of them walk (laughs) over. She puts hers right in this dragon's neck and severs the neck. And Leon takes his and shoves it in the dragon's other eye. And, uh, and then Thomas comes and cuts one of its horns off and takes and says, I mean, if I'm not able to get any of the fucking gold, this will at least make a good enough prize. I'm sorry about your friends. I mean, they weren't my friends, so I don't really give a fuck. But thanks for the condolences. <laughs> Perhaps there's something that magic can do for them. We'll bring them back to the village and see what we can do. So they don't kill us in the process. I don't know what sort of necromantic (laughs) shit you got going on in the village, but (laughs) Tom also then... He's going to fill up his bags with as much gold as he can. Okay. (laughs) And as much treasure as he can. And he's going to tell Leon to do the same. And he can keep half of whatever he takes, but Thomas will take the other half in place of the beer that he took from Thomas earlier. Yeah, Leon flips him off. It's either that or I kill you. Bring it. You're almost dead. You're barely standing on your feet. I don't care. Well, have fun dying. And then he's going to hoist the two corpses up onto his shoulders and uh, take it away. Our three surviving adventurers make their way out of this cavern and up the cave that dropped them down into this passageway and make their way back to the village. There, they are happy to report that the dragon had been slain and the deep gnomes are are thankful for what the sacrifices that they made and for what they did. But... As the two adventurers leave and head back for Tilion, they are saddened when they see the people in the village expecting a, a war party coming back in full, and there are only two. But it still was St. Sana's Day, and St. Sana's Day is about 
experiencing and enjoying mortality for all that it is. In honor of Jeff Drunkle, the town hero for years, and Alabaster Talon, the sorcerer, dark warlock that had a betting problem, but everyone loved him anyways. They poured one out and drank one in honor of the legacy that they left and how they will forever be part of the St. Sans Day myth and legend.